What's up guys, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bass. In today's video, we're covering where do bass go in the early spring, that early spring transition from winter to pre-spawn. Where do bass go? Let's go. Are you guys ready to be thawed out? You know, uh, it's always funny doing this video throughout the uh, the years. You know, we try and do these seasonal videos every year just to help people through these transition process, through the transitional process, the seasons. Uh, it's been really cold where we're at, but guys down in Florida, they're already throwing frogs. You know, they're pre-spawn. Um, you know, so it just totally depends on where you are in the country and your weather. So where your fish are along that uh, winter to spring transition. So we're gonna give it to you guys early. That way you guys can start thinking about the process if you're already uh, starting to thaw out. And uh, those of you guys that are still frozen over up north, uh, my apologies. So hopefully here in the next couple months you guys can start thinking about it. But uh, out on the west coast, down in Florida, Texas, you guys are already thinking about it. You're probably already doing it. Uh, like I said, down in Florida, they're flipping and punching and frogging and uh, pretty pretty cool to think about so uh, where do bass go when we start getting out of winter so um, you can see I'm sitting in the Sun out here like I said it's been it's been uh, a little frigid the last few days um, last week or so you know fishing out there with my boy he was uh, it was cold so uh, props to him for sticking out sticking it out there with me but been fishing in the snow fishing all over and having a good time but it's coming, right? So I want you guys to start thinking about it, especially if you're cooped up and you have bad weather, you can start prepping your gear. Um, but uh, let's talk about first the different types of fisheries. Those of you guys that have followed along for the last several years know that there's highland reservoirs, lowland reservoirs, uh, natural lakes, river systems, and then your, your ponds. So um, let's start off with, let's start off with highland reservoirs. You know, those are your reservoirs that have real long arms, long tapering points, typically multiple arms that are rivers coming into the fishery uh, and your bluffs are, are fairly steep, you know, real, real steep contours. Um, all winter long, you've probably been fishing offshore, fishing off main lake points. You know, we taught you fish for rock, look for rock, fish the rock, that's where those fish are gonna winter. Well, now they're, they're, they're starting to think about Heck, where am I going to go to spawn? Uh, typically, uh, these fish are going to be looking for spawning bays. So in the very backs of these arms, the backs of the secondary points, those little spawning bays, that's where those fish are going to eventually end up in spring. You know, thinking about moon phases, the full moon, when those fish are going to start moving, these fish are going it, to, it's like a light switch, man. As soon as you get that first really warm, I guess warm week or so, a few days in a row, it's like a, a time clock. Those fish are gonna start their migration. So highland reservoirs, you know, we like I said, fishing offshore, fishing that rock, you've probably been throwing a, a, a jig or some kind of finesse setup, slow fishing on bottom. Uh, now these fish are gonna start heading to the back. So uh, what I want you to think about is those points that are heading to the backs of those spawning bays. You know, almost like a, in my mind, I picture it like a ladder, like stepping stones. Those fish are gonna take their time and they're gonna move one point to the next point, to the next point, working their way all the way eventually to the back where they can spawn. Now, this applies to all the different types of fisheries. You know, the, the speed and the time it takes could be different you know, between a, a highland reservoir and let's say a natural lake, but uh, highland reservoirs, lowland reservoirs, you know, you're gonna have more of those island tops, those humps and saddles. Those fish are gonna kind of use those saddles kind of as like a, a highway, if you will, to, to make their way back to those, those bays as well. But uh, lowland reservoirs and highland reservoirs uh, look for structure along the way. You know, we've talked about using Google Earth. We've talked about using a good mapping system on your electronics. Um, you know, either Lake Master Plus or, or Navionics, something like that. Heck, now you can even get it on your phone. And you can kind of play around and see where those migration routes are going to be. 
But uh, one key thing about both those types of fisheries is uh, look for the structure along the way. So if there's a secondary point, you know, two or three points back towards the spawning bay that has a lot more structure on it. Um, <laughs> pretty cool, bunch of kids waving. Uh, that is primarily where those, gonna, those fish are gonna hold up. Now the other key thing to talk about that I want you guys to kind of think about is these fish during this migration pattern never really backtrack. So say they start this process, it doesn't matter if it's a highland reservoir, a lowland reservoir, natural, fi, a natural lake, whatever. These fish aren't gonna backtrack their migration. Maybe a point, maybe two, but typically if there's a cold storm that comes in, those fish are gonna shut down. They're not gonna move back. They might move out and deeper, but they're never gonna move back uh, you know steps really in that process so hopefully that makes sense so if you've been fishing these fit you know fishing for these fish and you're following them through this this migration this this uh, route if you will uh, and and all of a sudden you get a, a real nasty storm those fish are gonna get locked jaw they're gonna shut down but they're not necessarily gonna move back so try going out a little bit deeper try slowing down fishing for them but you can catch them still during that process. Now, <clears throat> the other key factor to all these fisheries, I mentioned storms. If you get a really warm spring rainstorm and all of a sudden there is moving water in the backs of the little bays, heck, shoot to the back because as soon as those fish sense that or feel that, incoming water that fresh water they're gonna be going back to the back as fast as they can and a lot of time you can get up in that murky that dingy water coming in it's gonna be warmer than the lake and you'll I mean you can just sit there and stroke on them I mean there's the whole school of fish will just fast track to that that moving water so again thinking about the process doesn't matter if you're out on the lake today in home thinking about ice fishing what wherever you are in this in this seasonal transition, think about the way that this plays out. So we talked about highland reservoirs, you know, follow those secondary points. Same thing with lowland reservoirs. You know, look for those creek channels, those, those uh, kind of that route between the high spots. So it's gonna be a saddle. The fish typically like the little bit deeper water as they make this transition. Uh, and then also your secondary points. Look for those fish staging on those points. Again, you get a cold snap coming in. It shuts those fish down. You don't necessarily need to backtrack, just move out a little bit deeper, use your electronics, your side imaging, whatever it may be, and you will find those schools of fish. The other thing that I really wanna to touch on, or that I wanna to touch on, is when these fish are moving, and you find, it doesn't matter the type of fishery you're on, uh, if you find that you're catching smaller fish than normal, say you have a four pound average or a three pound average per, let's say and now all of a sudden you're catching pound pound and a halfers those are the males now the males are going to move first in this transition so if you're catching dinks along the way backtrack a little bit through that process whatever it may be on your fishery and that's where the females are going to be so <clears throat> if you're catching uh <clears throat> fish smaller than you, that you're used to or that you're that you typically are catching your fishery backtrack a little bit because you will find the females are typically moving a little bit slower than the males again you get those warm st uh, storms coming in you get that moving water all of them are, are heading to the back um, that that can be a lot of fun we'll cover we'll cover springtime muddy water fishing here in the next couple videos or so just because I want you guys thinking about that as well but uh, it is warm out it is nice to be thawing out um, it, it's been it's been a little cold we've been getting these out here in East Tennessee we get weird weather you know one way one day it'll be 70 degrees winter time 70 degrees 65 degrees shorts t-shirt weather and then you know you'll get a storm from the south it'll be warm a little bit of precipitation and then you get a storm from the north and it's like holy cow 
the Arctic just moved in. You got to, I mean, parkas and layers and stuff. And it seems like every day, sometimes two or three different seasons in the same day. It's it's crazy. It's wild, but uh, but I love it. So we talked about lowland reservoirs using those saddles. You know, the 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 lower areas between the island tops. Typically on lowland reservoirs, you don't have those real long river arms. You don't have those real long tapering points that come out to the main river channel or or to the main body it's usually it's usually highs and you know high, highland highland highs island tops and lows like your saddles and those fish are going to use that like a road to get like i said back to the eventually the spawning base now natural lakes uh, let's talk about natural lakes and ponds together because ponds typically are like a, a natural lake um if you got a giant dam on your pond, then you probably have a lowland reservoir. But uh, natural lakes, a lot of those fish are gonna move out, right? They're gonna winter out in the deeper water. Um, again, it's all about the rock, right? It's all about that hard structure, that cover that they can butt up against and, and they can hunker down and that's where they're gonna winter. Talking through this transition, using your maps, using your, your Google Earth, whatever you're looking at, you know where those fish are going. You can see the spawning bays or, uh, or the creek channels, that sort of stuff. A lot of times on these natural reservoirs, if you come a little bit offshore from the current shoreline, you know, depending on water levels and uh, droughts and all that sort of stuff, take that in consideration, a lot of times you will find an old lake shoreline. You know, maybe when there was a drought, say the lake is down 15, 20 feet, those waves when it got windy, they created a, 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 a lip, an edge. So a lot of times, if you use your electronics and you're out there idling offshore, you'll see that slow gradual taper and then just a, a little bit of a, a foot or two foot, three foot drop. Now that is what those fish are gonna use. They're gonna use that like a fence line, like a highway, and they're gonna run all the way along that until they get to that area where that spawning bay is and they'll jump up and go back. So hopefully that makes sense. If you can, if you can idle out, spend some time behind the, the console of your boat, idle out uh, and look for those little subtle breaks and uh, they will use that, like I said, as like a pathway to get to where they're going, the area where they're going, and then they'll jump up and go back. Again, if you get that storm, all of a sudden the creeks that are feeding that natural lake starts pumping, skip all that and head to the back and you guys will find the majority of the fish there. And again, uh, you know, there'll be waves, there'll be cycles with the different moon phases and stuff. We're not gonna get too into that yet, but, um, but that's natural lakes. Ponds, same thing, you know, obviously, Ponds, my definition of a pond, something, you know, less than, let's say less than seven to 10 acres. Otherwise you start to get into a small lake, but you know, typically you can fish a pond in, in a day from shore. Um, you know, fish the deeper stuff first, fish your dams, fish the area that uh, is gonna be the deepest and then work your way through that, that, through that transition just like you would in a different reservoir and you're gonna work your way to the shallow, the shallowest part, the back of that pond. Somewhere in there, the different depths is where you're gonna find your fish. Uh, you know, you can fish Texas rigs, Carolina rigs, small swim baits, you guys will have success with all that. Um, but that's, the, that's the, the good part about pond fishing is you can fish the whole thing fairly quickly and really go through that process. Again, you know, a pond, those fish could be only moving a hundred yards and boom, they're, they're spawning. So, you know, some of these fish on these re big reservoirs, you know, they might move miles. So a little bit tougher on the bigger fisheries, obviously, but if you use kind of that stagger system, that ladder system or that stepping, stepping system through those main lake points, those secondary points, uh, you guys will find those fish. Now the last type of fishery is gonna be a, a river system or a delta. Now, Again, it's just like a lot of the other fisheries. Obviously, you have current that's uh, that comes into play. Your main river channel current. Now, don't confuse that with backs of pockets, creeks starting to flow current. Because if that happens, those fish are going to jump up out of those. I'll call them 
current seams or the mouths of creeks. Right now they're sitting on the break in the main river channel, uh, feeding in the mouths of the backwater uh, channels. Now, eventually they're gonna end up in the very back of those bays. So if you get a storm, just like the other fisheries, those fish are gonna jump up and shoot to the back to go get that fresh water, even though they're in a river system. Um, but again, as, as that water level rises, you know, those fish are gonna go with that water level. They're gonna come up with it and start moving to the back. You know, we didn't really talk about that in the Highland and Lowland reservoirs, but as you get those, you know, maybe you have snow melt and your lake could be coming up a foot a day, two feet a day. Those fish are gonna rise with that and they're gonna continue their pro progression through those secondary points, but they're also gonna be getting closer and closer, higher up and, you know, as that water rises uh, closer to the bank. Um, but again, just things to think about, guys. You know, this, uh, this is a great time to be uh, fishing or at least thinking about fishing. You know, it's my favorite time of the year that that uh, spring transition into pre-spawn, it's typically when you can catch the biggest fish of your life. You know, these fish are feeding up. They're, uh, that's one thing I do wanna talk about also during this transition. It's not strictly bait driven. Yes, the fish, if you can find bait balls along that process, those fish will stick with them, but it's it's like a 50-50. It's a, it's a structure versus bait type of deal. You know, if you can find a point that has a good structure on it, those fish are gonna be there. If you can find a point with uh, lots of bait hanging on it, those fish are gonna be there. If you can find a point with structure and bait, that's probably the best best scenario, but um, it's a great time to be out. You know, as the water temps warm, these fish start getting more and more active. They start moving, they're feeding, their metabolism starts speeding up. Everything just starts kind of coming alive, if you will. You know, it's been a several cold months, depending on where you are and these fish have just been kind of shut down and kind of lethargic. That's why we've kind of had to slow down and, and downsize for uh, fish little blade baits or little underspins. Uh, now you can really start picking them off with the moving baits, the A-rigs, you know, the swim baits, different types of swim baits, but um, it really is a great time to, uh, to be out on the water. Hopefully you guys did your homework with these water levels low. If you're on a fishery that has uh, water levels that kind of fluctuate a lot of times in the winter time uh, they drop the water right they drop out here on chick it's it's called winter pool and they drop it I don't know seven feet or so so there's a lot that you can learn looking at the topography and just looking at the shoreline and seeing cool little things hopefully you guys did some of that we talked about it earlier probably late last year uh, about getting out using the handheld GPS, taking pictures, just doing some research on your on your fishery. But now, as we start getting these spring storms, start thinking about that pre-spawn, the water levels are gonna start rising. And a lot of those things that you found during the winter are gonna start coming into play. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please leave those down below in the comments section. Uh, we'll try to get to those as soon as possible. But uh, Tis the season to start fishing, start warming up and catching some of the biggest fish of the entire season. So I'm really, really looking forward to it. We got a bunch of videos planned ahead for you guys, kind of help you guys through this transition. Muddy water, different baits, all sorts of good things. But um, if you guys haven't already, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon, guys. Have a good one.